brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel and the tradition of Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Just to let you know, the reading is a little bit longer than usual, so if you feel you have to sit, please feel free to do so. <clears throat> Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus addressed this parable. <clears throat> A man had two sons. The younger son said to the father, Father, give me my share of the estate that should come to me. So the, the father divided the property between the two. After a few days, the younger son collected all of his belongings and set out for a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that company and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to the farm to work with the pigs. He longed to eat with his fill of the pods which the pigs ate, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough to eat, and here I am dying from hunger. I'll shout, get up, I go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of the hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father ordered the servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast, because the son of mine was dead and had come back to life. He was lost and had been found. And the celebration began. Now the oldest son had been out in the field. On his way back to the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fat calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and refused to enter the house. The father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father and replied, Look, all of these years I have served you, and not once to disobey your orders, and yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast with my friends. But when the son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, to him you slaughtered the flatted calf? He said to him, My son, you are with me always. And everything I have is yours. But we have to see. We have to celebrate and rejoice. Because your brother was dead. We've come back to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. 
It's not pink. <laughs> Obviously, that's a very um, emotional re reading. And it gets to me because I felt the same way. I've said this before, and it bears repeating. For three years, I walked away from the church, as I, many of you know this. And I was, had a great job, making a lot of money for the time, had a lovely car, but I wasn't happy. And what brought me back to the church was my mother's funeral. And right after that, it all started again. So I thank God, and that's why parts of that is very difficult to read. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Ever notice that when Jesus has a teaching, it centers around a meal. If you read this, this is the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. The only place we find this story in the scriptures is in the Gospel of Luke, along with the Good Samaritan, and the story of Zacchaeus, who was mentioned in the penance service. The beginning of this chapter, Jesus talks about the parable of the lost sheep, and we know what that ending is, which we heard at the beginning of the penance service. The lost coin, where the woman lost the coin and then invited her friends to rejoiced because she found what was lost. And this part, the prodigal son. All three parables are directed at the Pharisees. The ones who thought they were righteous. The others, they considered to be sinners. All of them were lost as far as they, but they really didn't care that they were lost. All they were interested in was who they were and that they could lord it over others. You've heard that before in the scriptures. Huh? And the young man who leaves the house, he asks for his inheritance. We heard the story. And he goes and spends his money freely. Notice, the only time we hear the word prostitute came from whom? Brother. The brother. Right? Where was the brother's mind? Was he as loyal to the father as he proposed to be? Or was he someone who was also, as the Pharisees, very hypocritical? We don't hear much about the, the older brother. And then the, other, the young son. Obviously, even though Luke was not, Luke was a Gentile, he centers this story on the Jewish community, the Pharisees and so on. And the young son longed to eat what the pigs were eating. He was sent to work with pigs. Completely against his upbringing as a Jew. And then he decides, I'm going to go home and want to be treated not as, a, not as a family member, but as a slave. And the father sees him. Quick! Bring out the finest cloth. 
put a ring on his finger, a ring, a symbol of authority. Put shoes on his feet because sandals were a sign of freedom. Being barefoot was a sign of being a slave. And the father's love. He sees him in a distance. I wonder how long he was looking, gazing out. And finally, he runs and embraces the son. We don't know anybody's name, and rightly so. Luke did a good job of putting this down. Because the minute we put names to something, we become anonymous. It's not us, it's so-and-so. But we're all in this together this morning. If there's a hurt, any place, try to heal it. The hurt will pass. The forgiveness will be there. But don't dwell on what happened. Rejoice that we've been welcomed back into God's family. Pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. Amen.